Congratulations. Uh, what uh, what are you going to do with the rest of your life now that you're no longer dealing with the headaches of uh, big time administration? And I've practiced this answer. Whatever <laughs> my wife wants me to. That's a great answer. <laughs> That's it. She's good. We have a good time together. And uh, of course, my son's just he'll be, he'll be a freshman at UT this year. And of course, my daughter's out of college. But uh, you know, just. Just retire and be a family guy. That's what I, I'm going to enjoy this. Uh, that, that is interesting uh, because uh, I know that uh, that school is very dear to you, and I'm sure it's not always easy to walk away, uh, but uh, I am interested in your view. I mean, with some distance now, uh, every, every, every transition is, is difficult, <laughs> but uh, from, a, from a little more distance than you had, uh, your view of what's going on up there. Well, uh, from what I can see watching and, and knowing the players that are there, Jeremy's not dealing with a, a four-year stack of his players. And when he does, I think you'll see some differences. I'm not saying the ones that were there were not SEC players, but I know some of them were not big enough. Our offensive and defensive line from three years, four years ago, they were tiny guys. And, you know, you could see it just in warm-ups. And they played their hearts out, but come fourth quarter, third quarter, they just hand off and run through you because you're just not big enough to, to take the punishment. And, <laughs> in fact, Coach Pruitt, you know, Coach Battle was the AD there and Coach Pruitt was under him. And, all. and so Coach Battle told Coach Pruitt, <laughs> you know, if you run into any problems up there, just get Call Connors to the side. He'll help you. He's not a flabber. He's not going to tell everybody. He's just going to let you know wh where to go. So the second day he was here, day number two, he calls me in his office, and I'm thinking, what can be wrong already? And he looks at me and says, Connors, where are all the big guys? <laughs> <laughs> I am I uh, said, well. <laughs> I, I want to get you. I mean, you what you what you spent. You spent more than twenty years uh, up there, if I remember correctly. Um, as you, and I have to get some perspective here because everyone wants instant uh, gratification, Condridge, as you well know. But you, you've you've not only played the game at the highest levels, but you you've been involved in administration. Uh, I, help us understand the other side of it, Bago, because when you're an administrator. Uh, snapshot ju snapshot judgments like we do on a show like this are are, are not easy to uh, facilitate. What's it like being on that side? Well, fortunately for me, I was I was taking orders from somebody else. I wasn't the <laughs> only one getting that done. And uh, you know, Dave Hart and a few other guys were were making decisions. I kind of got. I was involved mostly with the pro scouts and our players. I was their direct line to what, not necessarily what they could watch on tape, but what the kid does off the field and with other people and in the city. I mean, what kind of, what kind of player is he off the field? And, you know, I let the guys when they came in, when they came to sit with me, let them know, guys, this, the pro scouts asked me this, and I'm not going to lie to them. Because I'll lose my job. I'll, all I'm telling you is do what you have to do, but be a gentleman about it. You don't have to go out in that crate because you're a football player. In, in being at that university, a, lo a lot of people uh, you know, go back to uh, Coach Fulmer when, when he left, and, and there's still debate about whether that was the right decision. or not. That's really not a relevant conversation for now. I mean, the, the only conversation I think that matters is, is, is Jeremy Pruitt in this program. But as someone who played there and one of the, one of the iconic players in Tennessee history who worked there for 20-some-odd years in administration, I, I know it's sometimes tough because of the distance uh, you just left, uh, as, as you said, but what, what will it take for Tennessee to return to, to prominence? Well, the one thing that I know for a fact, they're going to have to start – and they already have. You got to get SEC players to play in the SEC. They've got to be the the size, and you got to have backups that are the size. If not, when you run into Auburn, Alabama, Ole Miss, you know they're going to pound you to death. And that's your kids are going to play their hearts out, but they're going to get beat up. 
And we after a while there, we got to where we were. We didn't have very many SEC linemen. Yeah, they were heavy, but they were 5'10". You know, and it's just – it's a different kind of player that – we didn't have very many Mickey Marvins on the team. I'll just say that. <laughs> I remember Mickey. Yeah, he was my teammate. He was a monster. But, I mean, he was yeah. – uh, but he was, by the way, a uh, monster was one of the nicest players I've ever met. Oh, yeah, without a doubt, without a doubt. And then I went on to Canada and met – one of my another friend that's a really good friend now, but he was beating me up at Alabama. You remember your defensive tackle, Mike Raines? Oh, I do. Yes. <laughs> yeah, we we didn't have anybody look like him, but I ended up playing up with playing with him for six years in Canada and Ottawa. But uh, you know, it's just players, and now we're 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 headed that way again. I think we're we're going to get back, but it's it's going to take a little bit. But uh, we. You know, everybody says, well, what, what do you think Jeremy Bruce is going to do? I said, look, let me ask you something. Did you not see him hold up the national championship trophy last year? And they go, well, you know, well, well, just leave it at that. He can, he knows what he's trying to do. He's been there. He's been on part of that staff, and, and he knows what to do. You just got to get the players to do it. So I fight that battle all the time. I try not to, but. God, sometimes it just bothers me that people don't understand. I and I understand fans. I understand they're, they're fans, and that's great. And I, but you want to say, "Hey, let me give you some pads," and you go out there and get down no place. <laughs> <laughs> We're so glad you're watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports and analysis, download the ESPN app. And for live streaming sports and premium content, make sure you subscribe to ESPN Plus. We'll see you there.